Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Um, in this video I'm going to explain, um, it will be about Lua coding, Lua programming this time. And I'm going to explain how to separate your code in several files. So I will explain the require function here. Um, so require is a, a standard Lua function. This is why it's not called sol.main.require um, or something like that. It's really the the real standard Lua function require with a, a very little configuration change uh, for Solaris allowing to require things relative to your quest. So this is how it works. We have a lot of scripts in the real game and all of them are included through require calls. So okay, let's imagine that um, you have a new feature to add to your quest and for this exa example the this great new complicated feature will be to print hello world uh, at some point. So when you run your quest, okay, hello world appears here in, in your the console. Okay, this is awesome. And if you imagine a real new feature instead, um, you probably want to put it in a separate file. Okay, not everything in the main. So what we are going to do instead is to call some function like this, where hello is a table coming from another file, another script file, and we call it scripts slash hello. Um, so, if I try right now, you will probably better understand. So, of course, this script does not exist, so we have a problem. And there is a very helpful error message here. main.lua line 5, so this line. Um, the script slash hello module was not found. And the error message explains all locations where Lua tried to find it. The first of these location is in the quest. So it tried script slash hello dot Lua and so in your data directory and also in the data dot solaris archive or dot solaris dot zip archive. Because um, as you might know once your game is finished, you can distribute it um, as a as an archive, as a single file, instead as instead of as a, a directory. And require is able to look up your scripts even when you are running the game uh, through the data .solaris archive, or it can be named like this. It doesn't matter both are accepted, both are recognized. So yeah, transparently it will load the, the scripts um, from within the, the archive. And it also searches in some standard directories of Lua. So the, the, this is really the, the real require function, just configured to have this additional path so that it works. Okay, so now let's create the hello.lua script. So the convention is to always create a table here. Oops. And to put some functions in the table. In this example, we want a print hello function, right? Oh, a hello world function. Okay, fine. No parameters. 
and this function will just do what what I wrote just before but we don't want to write it in the main function we want to write it in another file of course in real life we imagine a, a more complicated function because if it really does uh, one line there is no point and we return the table so this is an empty table we add a function value to the table and this function value is called hello world and we return we return the table okay so this variable now contains the table so this is how it works we'll be able to call the hello world function from here from the other file okay hello world nice and let's imagine that several files need this great feature for example the game manager also need it this is a situation that always happens in real life and okay the game manager also wants to call hello world when we start a game so now we should see two hello worlds one in the beginning and one after the logo when the game starts okay hello world um, and what is very very important is that require keeps in the in its in an internal cache the return value of the first time it it was called with uh, the same parameter so here in main.lua the first time we we call require with script hello parameter this file will be opened will be passed and will be executed and then require will memorize uh, the result here before returning it here and the second time require is called with the same uh, parameter this time the file will not be opened and executed again require will will just return um, whatever was returned the first time okay and we can even check this if we do another print here so when the file is executed the first time and actually the only time that's what I'm trying to explain loading or executing hello.lua and we will see that even though there are two require calls this will be done only once executing hello.lua and then we have uh, the two hello world okay so this is som something very important require mm, does not uh, simply load the file and execute it it actually remembers the return value for next times so it's very important if you have some costly operations to do the first time like um, in your pause menu you can imagine maybe you will have a lot of images to to load so we, you will load, it, load them only once and then um, if require pause menu is done several times uh, the images will not be loaded again and again okay um, now let's try to add another feature actually a feature a function that this time takes a parameter um, we no longer want to say hello world when starting a game but we want to print some information about the game so just before game start let's print some information about the game print game info and we pass the game parameter 
This means that we need a function here, another function, print game info with a game parameter. And this will do, this will print starting game. And for example, uh, let's say that we want to print the name of the map the game is starting on. Um, map ID. So, and to get the map ID, I can call game get starting location. Okay, execute. Starting game on map stairs second floor. Uh, yeah, because this is where I saved last time when recording the previous tutorial. So okay, this is how it works if you need to pass a game to your external script. Um, okay, so again, um, require is is really a standard Lua function. What I just explained is actually true for Solaris, but also for Lua in general. This is a conventional way in Lua to um, separate files efficiently. Create a table and put some functions in the table and return the table. Um, okay, I hope it was clear. Now you should be able to separate your code more easily and more cleanly. I hope it helped. So thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.